to the channel, folks. It's been a bit. Uh, here at the sawmill slab wood pile, uh, picking out some pieces to throw on to Ralphie here uh, for a project that's going on just uh, up the road a bit that we'll stop and show you. Just a small project, not a big one. Yeah, it's getting kind of late in the year for big projects. Uh, you never know. <laughs> start. That's right. And we don't know what kind of weather we're going to get. It's the end of November at the moment. We haven't really had any snow yet, but they're calling for a little tomorrow. Yep. Day at a time. All right. So as you may guess, he needs smaller pieces. We haven't seen anything from us in the last couple of weeks. We had some uh, issues with the equipment and the camera had to be sent away for repair under warranty. And then it did, came back and the weather was not uh, very cooperative. Any of the nice days I was working and not available. But we're back. The camera's working fine. I had used it one day for filming and turned it on back at the house to take the uh, video off of the camera to put onto the computer and lo and behold, everything was upside down. <laughs> the uh, view on the LED screen was upside down. The actual video that you took was upside down and then to add insult to injury when I closed it, it didn't shut off and the only way to turn it off was to um, take the battery off. <laughs> so I don't know what the issue was but it's all back to uh, normal now. All right, well I'm not sure exactly how much I need. Uh, just a small load, we'll take that out and See where it gets us. Let's see if that does what you want. Okay. Okie doke. Like to know what I'm doing. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I would too. <laughs> well, gee, I still got some white, <coughs> white birch there I gotta split. Just. 
Anyhow, this is a low wet area, typical on the property where you have two slopes, where this side over here is very relatively low. This, this side drains the big, tall, long eastern slope. So, and basically in the middle, this is just a wet area that basically drains and goes down around. Just a little hollow. So I thought as a winter project, uh, I would try and get in here. So you want to get up onto that slope? It actually, to put this into perspective, uh, this is really just once I cross here, probably 50 feet from where I did the dangerous leaning tree. It was a big fir that was suppressing one of the white ash. So the difference being is that without this little crossing area, it's drive, you know, a couple of hundred meters that way, go another couple of hundred meters up the slope and then come back another couple of hundred meters back this way. So this would be a shortcut. A shortcut. And, uh, which means efficiency, less uh, CO2 production, and so on. Well, and this also up that slope is where the uh, new road runs. Yes, at the top. Yeah, so you're not going up that far, or not at this point anyway. Well, I mean, it's first I get across, and then, <laughs> and then I you see what you got. <laughs> cutting out some of the, the fur and the white birch and so on, and you know. Who knows where I might end up. <laughs> Timbuktu. <laughs> Timbuktu. So there's all kinds of slab wood from the uh, sawmill, so. I figured it was worth a try doing it this way, see how it goes. Probably going to need at least another load. I want to get probably over to about this area over here. So about the same amount again, like the same distance again. Yeah, roughly another, well, maybe two loads. Uh, one or two Ralphie loads of slab wood to finish it up. Eight or eight feet or so.
But even though we've had uh, freezing temperatures overnight, and even the high today is minus one, this is still all wet because it's seeping out of the ground. Yeah. So getting this frozen is can be challenging, which is why the slab wood will help. So what's next? What's next? <laughs> well, my conscience is saying I should stop and since I'm here and uh, process that birch. Yeah, process that uh, white birch. So yes, yeah, so I've already been beating on this a bit as uh, now maybe with some frost in it, maybe we'll get some results, but... It's not easy to split. No, and I was sure when I cut this fella down uh, that he was going to be nice, easy to get along with uh, white birch, but... Not so much. Not so much. <laughs> Some progress. Ah, hit the same spot. Aha. Nope. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. So why would the frost make it easier to split? Uh, Makes it brittle? Right. Brittleness versus... Whatever. Well, give, give and... So if it's hard to split, does that mean it's got better heat value? <laughs> only when you're splitting. Oh, only yours. <laughs> Not in the fire. I don't think you get any more out of it once it's in the stove, but you sure get a lot out of it while you're uh, processing it. Well, Looks like it's coming. Gonna eat your axe. Doesn't want to give up. <laughs> there you go. But it just seems all very stringy. And why, I don't know. When you see them with internal knots and things like that, that becomes somewhat obvious. But that's not the case here. Well, you can see, like, how the, the grain is running here. Yep. That curly grain. Why? Well, it looks like it might have been a limb there. So that's a growth remaining from a limb. But just that can cause 
considerable difficulty when you're hand splitting. Of course, if you're using a big gas powered splitter, well, that's. You won't care a bit. Different story altogether. Yes. You'll uh, probably just keep going through that without ever noticing. That sounded good. It did. You can tell. You get that sound. <laughs> It's just like that. <laughs> well, thanks for watching, folks. Uh, hopefully, we'll be back on a regular basis. So stay safe, and we'll see you on the next one. Glad to be back, people. <laughs> Catch Again. you next time.